Hey everyone, I hope you all are doing good. So in today's video, I wanted to discuss about critical path versus longest path. The most popular definition I know about critical path is total float less than or equal to zero. But to avoid any confusion, let's look at what PIMBOK, which is project management's knowledge of book, defines critical path as. According to PIMBOK, the critical path is the sequence of activities that represents the longest path through a project, which determines the shortest possible project duration. Well, that's not exactly how Primavera calculates the critical path. To show you what I mean, let's switch back to P6. Click on Schedule and then Options. And you can see Primavera defines critical path in two ways. It defines critical activities as the one with total float less than or equal to zero. One thing is you can change the value in this box and change it to a value which you think should be treated as critical in your schedule. The other way P6 defines critical path is using longest path. But wait, from the definition we just saw, it sounded like critical path and longest path are one and the same thing. That's where the catch is. Critical path and longest path would ideally be same if you don't have any actuals in the schedule, if you don't have any project deadline set in the schedule, or if you don't have any constraints in the schedule. Because having one of these things in your schedule alters total float of your schedule. And then it alters the way P6 determines which activity should be considered as critical for your schedule depending on this total flow definition. Now the real question is which option you should select to obtain the real critical path of your schedule. I've talked with several construction scheduling experts and have been told that it's the longest path in your schedule which is the actual critical path. Oh wait, there's one more thing. If you just select this longest path option and if you then go to filters and use this critical path filter, you cannot expect to get the correct longest path in your schedule. A correct longest path in your schedule is a continuous one showing the activities which are contributing towards project completion. But what we see in this Gantt chart area, there are few overlaps in our schedule and also our filter is showing WBS summary activities which are not actual contributing activities. So the question is how do you actually get a correct longest path? Well that's what I'm about to show you. For starters, click on schedule and then choose options. From here, select the advanced tab. Turn on this multiple float path option here. Then choose free float and simply define the final activity in your schedule here. Also, as we want to create only one longest path, so type in one here. Now you might think why I'm choosing this free float option specifically. To show you why, let's switch to Oracle's website. Here, as you can see, they have specifically asked to choose this option to define critical float paths based on longest path. Now that we're done with the settings, let's close this and click on schedule. Now when we're working with float paths, there are a few more steps before we can get the results. First is to add these two columns, float path and float path order. Second is I have created a filter which will show you only those activities on our float path one. Now choose this filter and click on schedule. Now you might want to notice that all the WBS summary activities are gone. Any overlapping activities we had before are gone. So what we have here is a true critical path, a true longest path with no overlaps and is continuous. Let me know in the comments if this video has been of any use to you or if you knew this technique or if you have any suggestions to better it. Thanks.